okay am i audible please let me know live students yeah rahul so coming to the last week's current topics national institutional ranking framework so ranks were given to the higher education institutions of course not only higher even for uh, professional degree colleges like iits and also law universities like nalsar etc so you know this ranking will encourage the people who are maintaining good standards it will also help the institutions which are not having appropriate rank to see that in the coming days they will have good ranking so last uh, group one prelims telangana as you can see they are asking the parameters they are asking the parameters in the examination on uh, in giving this rank what sort of parameters are considered by the agency or any institution or organization which is involved in ranking like we have discussed gender gap index they have asked the parameters okay now national institute uh, national institutional ranking framework release the sorry national institutional ranking framework recently released the india rankings for 2023 for evaluating higher educational institutions based on based on various parameters okay then national institutional ranking framework is a methodology developed by the ministry of education now ministry of education you know ministry of human resource development is renamed as ministry of education okay and uh, in which year in which year now see nowadays the questions are like that like when uh, frbm act was formulated and what is its uh, aim giving four or five statements and even if you don't know one statement you will not be able to conclude the answer okay yes now in which year in which year in which year the ministry of human resource development was renamed as ministry of education in which year and on what occasion this sort of uh, uh, addressing the issues is the need of the hour to address the modern trend of examination or change the trend of examination anybody anybody from live class and anybody from offline mode so this is uh, this reflects uh, how you are preparing for the examination so nobody is able to answer so it was done so in 2020 in course of national education policy national education policy you know it was a three language policy and we have discussed earlier nep 2020 so you may expect such kind of things okay yes very 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 important in india to rank higher education institution in the country it was launched in 2015 this system was launched in 2015 earlier it was given by ministry of human resource development now it was renamed as the ministry of education aims to provide a comprehensive assessment of institutions based on various parameters yes now you have to remember this parameters teaching learning and resources 30% weightage research and professional practice 30% graduation outcomes 20% outreach and inclusivity 10% perception that is understanding 10% see in detail teaching learning and resources 30% weightage student strength in that in this uh, 100% 20% is for the student strength faculty student ratio this is also important so now take the example of our institution of course we will have the of course not less strength but okay so i will concentrate more on you if there are n number of students even i will don't know whether he is our student or not definitely 
now faculty with phd why phd because phd person will have specialization in the subject financial resources and also utilization in proper manner or judicious use it is also important and online education they have given 15 15% see online education parameter is given weightage it's it means government is encouraging the online education okay but online education it is having both pros and cons because there is lot of digital illiteracy and even our internet connectivity sometimes is not up to the mark even our uh, other campus ashoknagar will always face the i mean interruption of uh, internet connectivity i don't know why okay and even the student will distract because if you sit in front of me you cannot you cannot use the cell phone or other things you will maintain the class etiquette that is not possible in your house somebody may sit on sofa in course of time she or he will lay down and even he or she may go into fast asleep that sort of things may not may not happen in our classes of course in some rare cases few people will also sleep in the class it is not uh, common but still okay yes so 30% teaching learning and resources and uh, research and professional practice publications main journals or theses citations patents you know we have discussed in the last um, i mean last month current affair classes maybe maybe two months or three months ago iisc bangalore is involved in applying for more number of patents if i am not wrong yes we have discussed so in my opinion of course just publication may not render anything it should be useful see now what happened uh take the example of indian polity of course from a long period you are having the book lakshmi kant now many people are publishing that book so mere publication will not serve the purpose by seeing publication in my opinion you cannot give a rank to the institution okay of course it is one of the drawback and research projects and uh, graduation outcome placement and higher studies so how many people got the placements in good companies and how many people were selected for the top higher education institutions and university examination median salary and uh, phd students and uh, outreach and inclusivity region diversity okay then uh, how far it is serving our women diversity economically and socially challenged students 20% physically challenged students i mean 20% so they are considering many parameters perception understanding so try to remember this as uh, as nowadays they are asking the parameters like take the example of uh, finance commission it is by article 280 on many occasions you are getting the question related to finance commission with regard to the parameters on which uh, it is recommending the i mean devolution of taxes from center to state okay yes please try to understand this and uh, this year's ranking has integrated the innovation ranking previously executed by the atal ranking of institution in innovative achievements now participants increased participation from 3565 institutes in 2016 to 8686 now you know many 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 uh, institutions are coming so more institutions uh, participated and uh, top engineering institutes from a long period you can see madras delhi bombay first is madras delhi second and bombay third and even of course few students now do they have pursued the iit they are switching over their career towards the civil services and you can see uh, few people are also topping the examination upsc now top management yes i am i am ahmedabad i am bangalore i am kozhikode you try to remember first second third first second third definitely they will ask you can see the last group on telangana paper 
order of uh, the pollution of cities. You have to remember four cities. <laughs> if you go on remembering this kind of uh, issues, then automatically one fine day you will not remember your date of birth and even your name also. One, two, three, four. If I am not wrong, they have, they have given the four options. Order of uh, the pollution. Okay? So there is no other way but to get the command. I am Ahmedabad. I am Bangalore. I am Kozikot, third. And again, top law institutions. Now even law is also, uh, lawyers also became a top profession. Uh, National Law School of India University, Bangalore, first. National Law University, Delhi, second. Nalsar, that is our Hyderabad. Third one. Now, Pharmacy Institute, National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Hyderabad, very near to our institution. Earlier, we had their IDPL. In the same building, we are having the NIPER. So, Law Institute from Hyderabad and also Pharmacy Institute from Hyderabad. So, actually, Hyderabad is having some sort of thing like uh, the inertia in the development, starting from the period of uh, Muhammad Kuli Kutub Shah, who is the founder of the city Hyderabad. From that period, gradually it is developing. Now, of course, the influx to Hyderabad from various parts of the country is phenomenal. You can see west, east, north, south, all the ways uh, it is extending. Okay? Now, uh, then, top pharmacy, first is our Naipa, second is Jamia Hamdard, second, Bits Pilani, third. If I am not wrong, this Jamia Hamdard may be, may be uh, related to the uh, traditional medicine because Hamdard is uh, such a word. Then, top, sorry, extremely sorry. Top colleges. Delhi University College is second position in top 10 colleges in India with Miranda House first and Hindu College second. So, always top colleges from Delhi and so it is not higher education it is generally starting from the graduation so try to remember the parameters and try to remember in which year human Res human resource development ministry was changed into ministry of education yes now us china chips war <laughs> you know chips but these chips are not alu chips okay you know, for some or other reasons, though USA and China are interdependent as far as trade and commerce is concerned, there is no doubt in it. But still, there will be always trade tensions, no border tensions between India and sorry, USA and China. Okay. So now what we are doing, we are utilizing this situation, India, and we are faring well. And even in the last class also, I told you, India is uh, giving uh, very much importance for the establishment of semiconductor industries uh, by encouraging them through, I mean, productive, uh, I mean, production-linked incentive scheme. Okay. U.S.-China war has prompted India to position it, itself as a player in the semiconductor technology. Actually, what is meant by semiconductor? Of course, I will not go into deep. And even I am not the right person to teach the science and technology. But in coming days, when you will have the SNT class in routine, then I will ask them to deal with this topic. What is conductor? Which will, for our understanding purpose, conductor means conductor of heat or conductor of electricity. What is insulator? Just opposite of the conductor. And when you come to the semiconductor, it is uh, between conductor and insulator that point you have to remember conductor and insulator semiconductor okay yes so both the countries us china wanted to have dominance in that sector why that sector is uh, having lot of demand electric vehicles your electronic appliances everything without semiconductors Nothing will move front. Even many electrical vehicles, uh, uh, 
delivery is delayed because of lack of semiconductors, especially Bajaj Shatak, if I am not wrong. And even last year, um, I mean, the automobile manufacturer could not deliver this because of the semiconductors. Okay? Yes. China, on the other hand, aims to achieve self-sufficiency in semiconductors through its Made in China 2025 plan. Of course, we are least bothered about their uh, war. Advantages for India in semiconductor technology. And India is having strategic partnership with US Micron during the recent PM's visit earlier in 2022. India US initiative on critical and emerging technologies deal was also signed. Earlier also, now also. Because recently Modi was in uh, Honorable Prime Minister was in USA. So try to remember this. This technology know-how or technology transfer or technology help will boost our semiconductor technology, uh, I mean semiconductor manufacturing. Now, uh, government support and investment, 76,000 crores is allocated to give impetus for this industry through the PLI scheme. Production linked incentive scheme. And even you can see, if I am not wrong, of course I could not remember, maybe the UPSC or one exam, they have asked about the PM Mitra and in which states that scheme is implemented. Yes, 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 group one, group one prelims. In which states? So, you know, India is having 28 states and even you have to remember in which states. The program is uh, implemented. That is how the questions are asked. And of course, India is having skilled workforce, no doubt in it, and growing domestic market. Yes, you can see automobile. India is the third largest market for the automobile. And these are widely used. And even the sale of electronic goods is also increasing day by day. Our standard of, uh, I, mean, like, uh, I mean, life is increasing day by day. Washing machines, your dishwasher, etc., etc. And uh, Cost competitiveness. India has a competitive advantage in terms of cost, offering relatively lower labor and operational costs compared to some other countries. This is very important. If operational costs are higher, the industry cannot survive. They will suffer losses. The Indian government has been actively working on developing the necessary infrastructure. Now you can see, as far as infrastructure is concerned, our India is uh, in a place in a better position. And even... To encourage the industry, the government is taking many steps and even it has resulted to have a best rank for India in the not best rank, but our rank is increasing year by year in ease of doing business. Okay? Yes. <laughs> India's initiative, just now I told, I told about the uh, production linked incentive scheme and try to remember that uh, value of the amount amount allocated it is 76000 crore because nowadays questions are of uh, statement form now three entities vedanta foxconn international consortium and singapore based igss ventures that had applied to build the chips even if i am not wrong one is coming up in the hyderabad foxconn okay yes now, Semicon India program, that is the allocation, launched in 2021. They will ask the year. Semicon India program was launched in, which of the following programs is correct, with regard to the steps taken by the Indian government to boost the semiconductor industry. They will put 2020, that's all. Then the statement will become wrong, and it is very tough to judge, and you will leave the question, because in UPS, you will have the negative marking. Yes. Fiscal support for a design-linked initiative, no doubt, like IP, IP rights, patents, etc. Now, see, the open market sales scheme of Food Corporation of India is in news uh, in recent days, starting from July 1st or even before that. Why this open market supply scheme, open ma market sales scheme, sorry, is in news? Why it is in news? There is a continuous political debate with regard to the uh, law or uh, some sort of action taken by the Food Corporation of India.
definitely nobody because you people never go through the current affairs nothing of that kind it is in hot debate because mr karnataka chief minister sidramaya has asked uh, that he want he will procure more rice from the fci to cater the needs of their ambitious scheme anna saubhagya if i am not wrong they wanted to give 10 kg of rice for each person in a family so automatically they wanted more rice and they asked the food corporation for the same and they said that now we are not going to give for the big players our aim is not to support a single state if they said that our aim is to see that this food stock will control the inflation and this food stock will extend security food security for the people who are in need not for your ambitious scheme and they said that even we will give we will allocate this to small private players also earlier only big players were allowed to participate in the e auction now small players can also participate generally rice and wheat will be sold by food corporation of india actually what they will do they will renew the stock see 50 to 70 lakh tons of buffer stock is maintained by food corporation of india of course it will vary so depending on various conditions see as far as paddy is concerned you can store it for two years not beyond two years also two years okay the old paddy that is old rice will be good old wheat is not good what they will do they will sell the old stock and they will replace that with the fresh stock how they will sell they will sell in the open market they will give a notification in the paper i mean newspaper and even they will also give a web notification asking the interested people to offer their tenders and this wheat is procured by our private players like annapurna atta ashirwad atta many people they will procure and they will convert into other farm you are having big biscuit companies whatever may be the biscuit the main ingredient is the wheat flour are you able to follow so everybody is criticizing the act of food corporation of india that is uh, changing the rules which has which has not uh, enabled the karnataka government to procure the uh, extra rice of course central government is having quota they demanded more the same case with the tamil nadu also even tamil nadu government also requested but uh, but fca said that we are unable to give understand now the problem with this kind of schemes like karnataka giving 10 kg there becomes some sort of problems in the supply chain if they give rice more in karnataka of course it is my opinion i am not criticizing anybody what actions what actually happens now everybody will start eating rice at least their consumption may increase earlier they used to eat more jawarika roti now they will shift to the rice what happened the demand for jawar may decrease and as far as jawar is concerned only one item is sufficient like sabji but for rice you need more items you can see the andhra thali especially one of my friend came from pune and i asked him we shall go to one daba or sorry we shall have the north indian dishes he said no 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 i will i will mostly uh, go for trips to i'm north india i want pure andhra thali then we went to andhra thali nearly 20 cups were there serving different items rasam sambar roti pachadi okay understand yes okay okay so these things these sort of things are helpful for your mains also the food corporation of india has imposed about omss under the omss the fci sells from time to time surplus food grains or they will sell to renew the old stock with the fresh stock through e auctions just now i told you states are also allowed to procure food grains over and above what they get from the central pool to distribute to national food security act beneficiaries you know every state will get food grains from the central pool okay yes but now what is happening to karnataka that 
that is not sufficient because they have promised to give more instead of 5 kg 10 kg now ensure food security by enhancing the supply of food grain during the what is the objective of oms what is the objective of open market sale of this uh, fci see to sub, to see that the food grains are available in the lean season what is the meaning of lean season when there is no harvesting so to tame the inflation understand now what happened to tomatoes what happened to tomatoes they have crossed century and now they are very near to the 140 rupees and it will have impact on adverse impact on the other vegetables also because tomatoes is the major share of vegetables which is sold especially in a, a few states because tomato alu tomato it, it, it is a, a common ingredient for many items so its aim is to see that to supply the food grains at the time of lean season and uh, and revision of oms the center decided to restrict the quantity that a single bidder can purchase from 3000 metric tons see earlier what happened a single bidder should purchase 3000 metric tons so only big only big players were allowed like state government now they allowed for even 10 to 100 metric tons even i can also bid for that if i am having the market license just 10 metric tons their price will be maybe 26 or 27 rupees per kg so this here if say uh, I'm replied to Karnataka and Tamil Nadu government saying that we cannot offer you a huge amount, only small amount, and that too through e auction. A small player will bid more than the state government because he will sell in the open market. Okay, now Karnataka government is trying to get the. I'm telling only for your understanding purpose. I am not politically related, and they are trying to get the required. Uh, Paddy from the Chhattisgarh or some other place, but it involves a huge transportation cost. Ours, see, actually, as they are giving are free of cost, so they should incur minimum, I mean, expenditure. If not, uh, the fiscal deficit of the state will increase and it will become burden. Okay? Yes. <laughs> the center stopped the sale of rice and wheat from the central pool under OMSS to state governments. Allowing, disallowing private bidders to sell their OMS supplies to state governments. So now even private players also cannot sell the goods to state governments. And even private government will, will not be able to sell at a such a low rate. Understand? Yes. And steps taken by states. Considering alternative methods of obtaining wheat and rice. Like Karnataka trying to get from adjoining state. Even Karnataka government asked Telangana government uh, for the supply of the paddy. And they said that we are not having the sufficient stocks. So actually, and uh, these states are uh, uh, criticizing the center mode, saying that it is uh, it is totally uh, politically motivated. Restrict and what is the reply of center? Restrictions are imposed to curb inflation and regulate supply. The center is already distributing grains to 80 crore marginalized beneficiaries under the NFSA. Already we are involving in the food security. Why you are doing so? It is a reply of the center. Okay. Now, so nowadays what they are asking? They are asking the years. What is food corp? Sorry. When food corporation of India was established, it is established. It is a statutory body set up under the Food Corporation Act 1964 in order to fulfill the following objectives of the food policy. They will ask the act. And even you are having the many exams related to the civil supplies. Effective price support operations and you know buffer stock and also to tame the tame the uh, inflation and also to see that malnutrition in India will decrease because India is having poverty. The people who are living below poverty cannot offer for the uh, I mean food grains which are available in the markets for more price. All this you can write. Now Namakal district in Tamil Nadu is in news. Why? Namakal district in, Tem district in Tamil Nadu in, in news, is in news. Why?
Okay. So, this district has successfully addressed its water scarcity challenges and achieved the second best groundwater availability in the country. You know, we are having many methods, sorry, we are having many methods to harvest the water. We have discussed in the earlier class also. Many methods to harvest the water, including collecting the water from rooftop at the time of rainy season. Okay? And even you are having water harvesting methods and even you are also having many schemes introduced by the central government for uh, harvesting the water. And we have discussed that scheme earlier elaborately. What is the name of that central scheme which aims to harvest the rainwater? Accelerated Irrigation Benefit Program is also by central government. But it is not uh, related to the harvesting of rainwater. It is a financial support to the state governments to complete their ongoing irrigation projects which are stopped due to lack of capital. Accelerated Irrigation Benefit Program is to support the state governments financially to complete the ongoing projects. Okay, Bhagavad Garu. So, it is, it, so nobody is revising. It is nobody is revising. Cast the rain where it falls when it falls. Cast the rain where it falls when it falls. So we have discussed. Okay. Yes. Now, so involved community participation, rainwater harvesting, sustainable agriculture. Even see, now government of India is encouraging millets. This year, if I am not wrong, we are observing it as the inter international year of millets. And even a question also came from the uh, millets topic in the recently held examination. They were asking about which of the following is not a millet. Kodo, Prox, Adi. Okay. Now, so you, I mean, uh, efficient, if you replace paddy, wheat by millets, automatically sustainable agriculture. And many people uh, strived a lot to achieve this. Take the example of Anna Hazare. He converted a desert into a greenery, that is Ralegaon Siddhi. And take the example of Jal Yoda, which person in India is called as Jal Yoda. Which person in India is called as Jal Yoda? Yes, Aparna ji, Rajendra Singh. This, his name and achievement you can see in the NCRT books. Disaster management. Okay, yes. So, we know many methods of uh, water harvesting, like check dams and uh, afforestation. Okay? Yes. Now, of course, the top uh, line say that the French Minerals Company has acquired 80% of British lithium, a UK-based startup extracting lithium in Cornwall, England. The partnership aims to develop a mine capable of producing 20,000 tons of lithium carbonate per year, enough to power 5 lakh electric vehicles annually. 5 lakh electric vehicles annually. But uh, as far as size of the world and existing vehicles is concerned, the number is very less. Because India itself, if I am not wrong, monthly will have a sale of more than 10 lakhs of vehicles. I am talking about the 
yes maybe more yes more than 10 lakhs of vehicles okay now we are concerned about the india how we are procuring lithium lithium because it is must how can india secure its position on lithium india recently joined the mineral security partnership led by the us along with france and the uk india can leverage its position to establish a trilateral strategic partnership yes three members and secure a reliable supply chain boosting its domestic ev manufacturing sector of course now about lithium it is soft silvery white metal under standard condition it is the lightest metal and the lightest solid element it is highly reactive and flammable and must be stored in mineral oil as lithium is having lot of importance nowadays they may ask any of these concept you leave that papers will be easy no yes countries with largest reserves you can see the uh, recent papers in one of the paper more questions were from the resources of the world geography part of the upsc also world geography questions now chile australia chile is having the largest reserves of uh, lithium remember they may ask definitely in the last upsc prelims exam you can see the resources second australia third argentina you can remember this in this manner caa as a mnemonic because we are uh, uh, very much related to the polity constitutional amendment act chile australia argentina and we have discussed lithium triangle chile argentina bolivia lithium triangle now in the last group one prelims examination the question was in which of the following states bauxite reserves are present yes maybe group 1 prelims are upsc they have asked about the bauxite reserves gujarat jharkhand yes see now lithium in india recently the geological survey of india has for the first time established lithium inferred resources g3 of about 6 million tons in the salal haimana area of the ut of jammu and kashmir lithium reserves were also discovered on revant hill in degana in rajasthan's nagor uh, uh, deg revant hill in degana in rajasthan's nagor district and karnataka mandya district mandya district is very near to the mysore the then honorable chief minister of uh, karnataka sm krishna belong to that district very near to mysore of course maybe 100 kilometers if i am not wrong or of course 30 or 40 kilometers long back i was uh, being there for one or two days so so now they will ask recent examination continuously you are getting one or two question from the minerals yes and uh, nagor district rajasthan nagor district is also well known for a act of the central government or state or of the government to fulfill the dream of gandhi for what nagor district is known for what nagor district is known my dears anybody my dears online students yes swami ji after independence okay panchayat raj for the first time panchayat raj yes first local they have adopted the 
local self government on the recommendations of which committee on the recommendations of which committee which is the first committee to study about the panchayat raj institution balwant rai mehta or ashok mehta yes balwant rai mehta committee on the recommendations of balwant rai mehta committee they have organized the panchayat yes divya garu aparna garu aparna is talking about the cattle fair yes theek hai theek hai theek hai theek hai so it is how you can remember the answers okay so jammu and kashmir and rajasthan's deganagar district and karnataka's mandya district <laughs> now earlier in earlier classes we have discussed who is called as the father of statistics father of statistics in the earlier uh, classes we have discussed who is called as the father of statistics yes pc mehal nobis yes 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 the government of india celebrates statistics day every year on june 29th in honor of the late professor prasanth chandra mehal nobis who made significant contribution to the fields of economics planning and statistics the theme of statistics day for 2023 this is very important alignment of state indicator framework with national indicator framework for monitoring sustainable development goals now it is what uh, niti aayog is doing without contribution of states india cannot prosper excellent theme to strengthen the federal structure these sort of things are needed pc mehlobis was an indian scientist okay sorry 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 extremely sorry and he is referred as father of father of indian statistics extremely sorry yes he is best remembered for the mehlobis distance referred to as the father see what is mehlobis distance it is a statistic term like our standard deviation or a person deviating from the general a group of people deviating from the normal marks you will have in our statistics that is with it is uh, mehlobis distance is related to that referred to as the father of indian statistics founded the indian statistical institution and is one of the members of the first plan first planning commission of free india he made pioneering studies anthropometry in india anthropometry see the last group on prelims examination if i am not wrong the evolution of human being i used to even in the evening class i asked that uh, that campus student to write as a homework homo erectus neanderthal man you have to remember they have asked that uh, sequence okay yes anthropometry is the scientific uh, measurement of human body anthropometry please check it once again yes yes outlier exactly yes, exactly bhagavat gar anthropometry is a scientific measurement of human body okay yes check it and remember and headquarters agreement between india and cdri so when you come to the cdri cdri we are the uh, initiators the union cabinet has given its approval for ratification of the headquarters agreement between the government of india and the coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure coalition itself means a group of countries whose aim is to see that the impact of disaster should be minimized to mitigate the impact of disaster cdri is a global partnership of national governments un agencies multilateral development banks the private sector and academic institution its aim is to provide a infrastructure which will be a disaster resilient and climate resilient etc 
and you you remember it was launched by the prime minister of india during the un climate action summit new york in 2019 it is seen as india's attempt to obtain a global leadership in that sector role in climate change and disaster resilience matters no doubt in it and it it is headquartered at new delhi you should please try to remember different headquarters you can see in the last exam members since it launched 31 countries 16 international organization and two private sector organizations have been members of cdri in 2022 the cabinet approved the recognition of cdr as an international organization that is sufficient energy transition index you know what is energy transition index the best example is we people are moving from fossil fuel linked vehicles to electric vehicles excellent vehicle electric vehicles came into the indian markets in my opinion the change is drastic because uh, one year ago we used to find very less vehicle less electric vehicles on the road now you can see more number of their share is more take the of course i am not the brand ambassador to any car or any vehicle but i want to see that you will be able to understand the subject in practical manner that mg e comet electrical car everybody is purchasing many even mg hector is also having electrical version tata also tata every every person and when you come to the two wheeler of course they are flooded in the market even there are many local manufacturers bisley e bisley e ride okay so and even in the last class i told you our government has mandated to give star rating for the electric appliances because the star rating will encourage the energy efficiency and you are having modern technologies like inverter air conditioners double inverter air conditioners okay yes context india has been ranked 67th globally on the world economic forums energy transition index making it the only major economy with accelerating energy transition momentum across all dimensions so it is a great achievement for our motherland in spite of political corruption of course it, it is reality in spite of immoral acts in politics like defection getting over uh, getting one from one party going into the other party it has became a new normal in the indian politics earlier one or two members used to defect now total fashion is getting defected and even they are also snatching the uh, symbols also of course for your understanding purpose i am saying it is our duty as a citizen of the country we should uh, uh, give attention to such uh, incidents which are undemocratic it is just mockery of democracy yes so our we are uh, in a better position the top five countries on the list are sweden denmark norway finland and switzerland the report highlighted india's achievements in reducing energy and carbon intensity achieving universal energy access achieving universal energy access that is very important because electricity is also related to the poverty see suppose if a person is having the ground sufficient ground water then how he will pump the water to i mean flood his fields no power yes tk singapore was the only other major economy showing momentum in sustainability energy security and equity now climate council it is a small group in maharashtra it is a group of farmers with the help of social they came all together on a platform and they were exchanging their views with regard to the various types of crops etc and how to act in the adverse climatic condition and it is said that it has given a good result yes social media if you use in a fair manner it will give good result but the problem is once you start watching a youtube that youtube will be followed by another youtube followed by another youtube followed by another youtube you will start watching youtube at 10 pm and what happens uh, unluckily the date will also changes 
but you have to use the social media in a better fashion and uh, this sort of examples why i am saying is how a community participation how a cooperation between n number of people will uh, i mean leverage the system that is very important and especially onion farmers but bad luck onion is having very less price but in course of time onion price will also increase when other vegetable prices increases automatically onion demand will rise because the percentage of onion used to make that vegetables they will increase from 10% to 30% automatically demand increases that is bad from a long uh, period onion price is not favorable to the farmers yes now next is the hul divas h u l hul divas what is it hul divas h u l hul divas Huel Divas, my dears. so nobody is answering and i will not accept the answer of uh, aparna and uh, madhuri because definitely they took uh, sufficient time to search in the google that is what i am saying you will keep a phone aside okay but still it is also okay because at least now you will remember theek hai so hul divas is observed annually on june 30th in memory of tribal leaders sidhu and kanhu kanhu murmu you know our draupadi our uh, madam president will also belong to this community santhal who led the santhal hul rebellion on june 30th 1855 before sipai mutni at bognadi in saheb ganj district now jharkhand and santhal rebellion you know british imposed lot of restrictions on shifting cultivation the rights of uh, tribal people on forest resources and even tribal lands were alienated and even these tribes were forced to employ in the british developmental activities free of cost and even christian missionaries created tension among them and in general we have discussed the reasons for the tribal revolts okay and uh, no, we know only two members but there are four members the rebellion was led by the four sibling brothers sidhu kanhu chand and bhairav okay and uh, you know we know about only the men who participated in this revolt but even there is abnormal participation of women folk in this revolt and the women folk and the women who led this rebellion can you name that woman no because we will not study see here pulo jano pulo jano two sisters led an army of 1000 women who played crucial roles in the rebellion the east india company's army was defeated twice during the uprising who knows who knows you may get questions like this yes now in the last maybe 3 or 4 months ago we have discussed about uh, 
ಜನಜಾತೀಯ ಗೌರವ್ ದಿವಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ರಿಕಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಚಾನಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಅವರ್ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಜನಜಾತೀಯ ಗೌರವ್ ದಿವಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಡೇ ವಾಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಜನಜಾತೀಯ ಗೌರವ್ ದಿವಸ್ yes november 15th it is related to birsa munda yes birsa munda yes good 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 yes that is with regard to the uh, this uh, remember hul divas hul divas annually on june 30 in memory of tribal leaders sidhu and konhu and the extra information is with regard to the pulo jano two sisters and uh, the great thing is this army was organized their army was organized almost all like uh, the british army contrary to popular belief the hull was a well planned and organized political war war preparations include guerrilla formations military teams directives secret bases logistics and network of message carriers just like the modern now the the government the department of economic affairs ministry of finance has authorized public sector banks and eligible private banks to implement the mahila samman saving certificate scheme 2023 so this sort of schemes will address the social issues especially in india we are having the gender parity okay now you may uh, you may got the question what is the interest rate given to these certificates what is the interest rate guaranteed for this uh, type of deposits anybody okay mahila uh, mahila samman saving certificate 2023 introduced in this year's budget and started on 1st april 2023 is an time saving scheme to provide financial security to girls and women in india to provide financial security to every girl and woman in india women can open the account for themselves or on behalf of a minor girl child tenure is 2 years interest rate 7.5% per annum earlier a question appeared in the upsc with regard to pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti yojana pradhan mantri suraksha yojana they were they were asking about the premium which uh, the beneficiary or the person who will cover the incidents has to pay now compounded quarterly that is also very important compounded quarterly because what is the meaning of that the three months principal plus interest will become principal after uh, three months that is the meaning of compounded annually of course you are proficient in mathematics okay and and even they can withdraw 40% of the amount after first year of course maturity 2 years from the date of opening the account investment 1000 to 2 lakhs is the minimum partial withdrawal is allowed uh, up to 40% of the eligible balance can be availed after one year from the date of opening now mon uh, scientific studies has revealed that recovery ozone layer is recovering why we have as we have taken the positive steps because of our positive steps the ozone layer is also re- is uh, recovering montreal protocol and its amendments are successful in eliminating up to 99% of ozone depletion substances chlorofluorocarbons long lived man made chemicals which destroy the protective ozone layer 
it highlights the impact of climate change and you remember this point the eruption of the hunga tonga hunga ha apai volcano very nice hunga tonga hunga ha apai volcano in the south southern pacific in january 2022 increased water vapor content in the stratosphere leading to reduced ozone in the lower stratosphere of the southern hemisphere a point which must be noted now pongongso lake so actually pongongso lake borders both china and india and you know time and again india and china will have tensions i don't know why i don't know why why i am saying in this manner means we are having great trade ties china india is the uh, second largest exporter for china if i am not wrong first is usa second is uh, china in spite of this business ties we are unable to put an end to such kind of tensions the main reason is the border disputes with china in the northeastern states and you know even uh, when jawaharlal nehru was prime minister of honorable prime minister of india they will occupy the aksai chin plains to lay a road uh, to the taklamakan desert and which is called as the himalayan blunder okay yes Pongongso Lake, both India and China have ramped up infrastructure development on the north bank of Pongongso Lake. In eastern Ladakh and western Tibet, China is constructing a bridge to connect the north and south banks of the lake, while India is building a black topped road on its side of the north bank. Yes, of course, now as far as geography is concerned, we are more related to the we are more concerned with the geography. Pongongsol is an endoric lake, means the water will not go to ocean or sea. That is called as endoric lake. In the last group one, the first group one prelims of Telangana because first cancelled, now second is ongoing. So first uh, you can uh, see, or first or second, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there is a question with regard to lakes. Maybe second, second, after our... Uh, Rapid Region program only, you wrote the second, na? second group one. Yes, you are having a question from Lake. Pongongso is an endoric lake. Bodies of water that do not flow into an ocean or sea called as endoric. Spanning eastern Ladakh and west Tibet, situated at an elevation of 4 to 2 5 meters. It is 134 long and divided into 5 sub lakes. It is the world's highest salt water lake. Try to remember. World's highest salt water lake. Its water, which seems to be dyed in blue, stands in stark contrast to the Arid Mountains. Okay? One third of Pongongso Lake lies in India and other two thirds in China. And this is the line of control. That is India and Pakistan. This is the line of actual control, India and China. Aksai Chin controlled by China since 1962. You know that. And Galwan Wali. Last uh, two years ago, we had an issue and even one person from Hyderabad, Telangana died, Santosh Kumar. <laughs> yeah. Can a governor dismiss a minister, my dear students? Almost all our old, for all our old students, polity is completed. And even, you know, our students are experts in polity. Can a governor dismiss a minister without the recommendation of the Honorable Chief Minister or the Council of Ministers headed by Chief Minister in precise? Answer is no. Answer is no. Yes. In that time also, CM has to recommend. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What happened? What happened? The issue arised in Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu. Okay? Yes. The governor of Tamil Nadu has dismissed a minister, Santil Balaji. 
the minister was facing serious criminal proceedings in a number of cases of corruption and was arrested by the ed earlier even if i am not wrong he was forced to undergo a undergo a operation he he collapsed yes one a person may collapse because of fear and anxiety artham ayinda samajh mein aaya he was dismissed on the pretext that he will adversely impact the due process of law including a fair investigation that may eventually lead to the breakdown of the constitutional measure in the state so new era has arisen in uh, which will infect the center state relation criticism of this unprecedented act of the governor dismissing a minister of a government is not at all possible by governor because it is undemocratic he has to do so only with the recommendation of the council of ministers headed by cm it has the potential to destabilize state governments power of the governor to dismiss a minister the government of india act 1935 the appointment summoning the post of governor it is from the um, if i am not wrong from the government of india act of 1935 and appointment of governor by the center is from canada if i am not wrong bad boy okay and good boy swami ji is telling all the answers the appointment see the post of governor is from the government of india act of 1935 appointment of governor from the center is from the canadian constitution don't get uh, misguided what does the indian constitution say according to article 164 of the constitution the cm is appointed by the governor without any advice from anyone it is a discretionary power it does not mean that the honorable governor of any state will appoint me no he has to follow some constitutional conventions only the majority party leader or majority party coalition single largest party here they will play from uh, they will play some politics like in the earlier class in the karnataka edurappa was sworn in as a chief minister and he was given one month time if i am not wrong or he was given 15 months time to prove his majority what happened congress party went to the supreme court and supreme court has ordered the governor only give 3 days of time to prove his majority automatically he could not prove and he resigned later what happened again congress uh, uh, formed the government and in course of time the congress government was debacled as many mlas from jds and congress joined with the bjp now okay yeah this in in such cases the governor may use the discretionary power but that too under the provisions of constitution that too with uh, morals and ethics according to article 164 of the constitution the cm is appointed by the governor without any advice from anyone and the individual ministers are appointed by the governor you know all this the reason is simple yes the cm alone has a discretion to choose his ministers and he is having the right to remove the minister and it is a political dictionary uh, decision and on many occasion supreme court said that governor should act on the advice of uh, council of ministers headed by chief minister that is very important the governor is a mere council head and there is no executive function which a governor can perform independently under the constitution b r ambedkar article 163 a council of ministers led by the cm shall assist and advise the governor you know this the pleasure doctrine is a formal act because you are having a pleasure doctrine the minister and chief minister will stay in the office until the pleasure of the governor until the pleasure of the president that is only a doctrine it does not mean that governor and president can remove the incumbent ministers their prime minister here chief minister so it has opened a new uh, way which will uh, undermine the uh, our uh, federal values yes now why what we are concerned the judgments 
given by honorable supreme court of india in shamshed singh versus state of punjab 1974 the supreme court declared the president gun and governor as the custodians of all executive powers who exercise these powers in accordance with the advice of their minister why i am reading the same means you will remember because i cannot manipulate this sentence in polity you should use the same words like in article 15 and 16 if you will not use the word only then the meaning will go in the Nambam Rebia versus Deputy Speaker 2017, the Supreme Court reaffirmed the law laid down in Shamshir Singh and discretionary power of the governor are limited to the postulates of Article 163.1. The court also set aside the decisions in Mahabir Prashad Sharma and Pratap Singh Rajirao Rane cases where it was held that the governor can exercise power under Article 164 in an unfettered manner. No. No question of governor exercising the power in the unfettered manner though in 1968 and 69 though they had, these two cases dealt with in that manner the supreme court said that no question of governor acting on his own now so i will take this topic after one hour i will give you one hour break after one hour i will take this topic because within 10 minutes this topic will not completed after one hour i will take this class okay after one hour we will meet thank you thank you for your cooperation many points are to be discussed thank you thank you